Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to our last pixel pad tutorial for our space shooter uh, tutorial, right? In last class, we implemented the game over room. You can see that when I collide with an enemy now, I go to a game over room that is a different screen to my game, right? And we added this game over text and this press space to play again. But you can see that before we didn't have this score uh, 5 here on the top left and that's because this score is created on the room play and when the score as a new text is created on a room it stays on the other rooms as well if you switch rooms right so when we go to the room play first it creates for us the score uh, text over there on the top left and then from the room play when we go to the game over the score just stays there so, but it's not a problem for us because we can just add here a background. So I will look for another background to use. Uh, you can use the same if you want the space bar, the, the space uh, image we used for the game, but I'll look for another one here on the sprites. Uh, let me see here, one just for the game over screen. I will use these pink space background. I'll use this one. So I'll, I select it and I'll call it uh, game over space. Now I have this background there. So we have already a class for background. It just doesn't have the image, the right image I want. So what I'll do, I will use that class. I, I can create that uh, an object from that class again so I can say that my game dot background is a object underscore nil so a new object from the class background but this if we see here we'll have the this background here but I want to change the image for the new image so I can say that my game dot background dot sprite will be equals in new sprite, so sprite nil from the image game over uh, space dot png and now if I play my game again I die for an enemy and I go to my other room and you can see that now that we added the the background we cannot see the the other score anymore right because the background was created on top of that score Alright, so now that we don't have the score anymore being shown for us, we have to create a score so we can uh, see on the game over screen uh, how much score we got, right? I just want to move this a little bit up, these instructions here, because I think it's just too close to the border. Uh, let's see, this should be fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And I'll move this one a little bit up as well. Okay, uh, 20. Okay, let's keep going. So I will add here a new text now for score text. So I can say that my score text, because this was created on the other room, right? So I can create it here again. Uh, it's a new text that says, so again, uh, so actually now because our, our our score is displayed like this score colon space and then the game score right but for the for the game over room I don't want to display score colon space and the, the number I just want to display the number so here I can just say that my text will be game dot score so this will be my text and you can display it right on the middle of my screen that's fine and I will change the color, so score text dot color to be white. And I'll also change score text dot font size to be something around a hundred. Let's see. So I press play. We get some score here, and then I die. I go to the other room, and it hasn't changed. Oh, I added a column instead of a dot here. So stop and play again. Let's try it again. Get some score. Uh, one score. We die. And there you go. I have my score being displayed right in the middle of my screen. 
I will make it a little bit bigger. I want to display a big number there. There we go. I'll bring it a little bit up. Now it should be better. Oh yeah, now it's better. And then, uh, so now if we die, the problem now is that if I press space on my game, I cannot play my game again. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We just go here on the game over room on the loop tab and we're checking for a key pressed. So if key is pressed and which key am I looking for? I'm looking for the space key. So just a space here. Then, so if I press the space key, what I want to do is I want to room set. So I want to set another room and the other room that I want to set is the room play. So if I press space on the game over room, it will just change my room to be the room play again. So let's see if that works. I start my game, I get some scores and then I die. Oh no, I got one score. Okay, I can press space to play again. I press space and I can play again. You can see that my score is zero again and everything happens again, right? Because we have two different rooms. Nice, so we have a game score uh, a game over and a playroom for our game, which is very, very, very good. Okay, now the last thing our game is missing is some sound. So let's add some sound to our game. I think it will uh, feel better our game once we have some sounds playing as well. So to add sound is pretty simple. So here in the left side, we have the sound section and we can look for sounds here to add to our game. So let's look for a sound to be our spaceship uh, shooting sound, for example. So let me see one. Oh my God, a good sound here. Let me look for a good one here. Here, I will get this one. I'll get the jump one. So I select the one that I want. I press select asset and I have to give it a name. I'll call it spaceship shooting and I press OK and there I have my sound spaceship shooting and now I'll go to my class player and here in my class player I'll say that now I have a shooting shooting sound that is a new sound or a sound underscore nil from the sound with the name, what's the name? Spaceship shooting dot mp3. Okay, so my player now has a shooting sound variable that stores a new sound from the file spaceship shooting uh, dot mp3. And on the loop tab, whenever I press space, I want to play that sound. So I can say here sound underscore play and which sound is it? My my space, uh, what's called my sound again? Uh, shooting sound, there it is. So self dot shooting sound. So now if I press play and I press space to shoot something. Nice, now I have some sounds on our spaceship shooting and I will add the sound now for when the uh, the bullet hit the enemy and I have a good sound for that already. So here on the sounds I have these This one here Yeah, I'll use this third jump here for my enemy hit so I'll select this one And I'll call it enemy hit and I press ok and I have the enemy hit mp3 loaded into my pixel pad I will go now to my, uh, so we have to go either to the bullet or to the enemy, but to the one that checks for collision. So here, the bullet checks for collisions with the enemy, and then it get which enemy uh, collided with it, and then destroy that enemy. Here, so after I check for collision, if there is a collision between the bullet and any enemy, I want to, oh, first we have to go here on the start tab and create the sound. So I can say that myself dot uh, hit sound 
will be equals add sound underscore nil from the file what is the file name enemy hit dot mp3 and now in the loop tab if there is a collision I can just say sound underscore play self dot hit sound and now press play oh yeah that feels way better <laughs> I like this sound cool so we have two sounds already we have the sound for when the spaceship shoots something and a sound for when the bullet uh, collides with the enemy right so the next sound that I want to add is for when the spaceship collides with the power up so let's search a sound for that Okay, I'll get this correct one here, this second correct here. So I select asset and I'll call it uh, power up pickup. So there I have my power up pickup dot wav now and I will go to my power up. Is that it? Is the one that collide the checks for collisions? Yes, this one. So here on the start tab, First thing I want to create the sound so self dot uh, pickup sound is sound new so it's a new sound from the f file power up pickup dot wave and in the loop tab again very simple right sound underscore play and the self dot where is it I always forget pick up sound self dot pick up sound so let's try it okay let's collect the pickup there you go very very good I want to create another sound now for when my pickup timer is over so when I collect the power up it gives me a sound and when I lose the power up time when I lose the power up time when my timer is over I want it to play another sound so again looks for another sound okay I'll take this bubble one here this second bubble so I select the asset this one here I select the asset and I'll call it power up time up okay uh, now I go to my power up the class of course and actually to the player because the player keeps counting the time yes so here on the player I will add a new sound so self dot uh, how can I call it power up uh, over sound equals sound underscore nil and the name of my file that is power up time up dot wave so self dot power up over sound so here on the loop tab now if my power ups true I keep counting the timer down and if the timer I mean I keep the count and the timer up and if the timer reach the time to use the power up I cancel my power up and I reset the timer and I sound play myself dot power up time uh, no power up over sound All right let's try it there's my power up let me take it yeah so pay attention there you go cool cool it's working now the last sound we're gonna add is the sound for when the player collides with the enemy 
So the sound for game over, that means that you've lost your game. So we'll add a new sound here, the last one. Look for another sound now. I will add this laser sound, I liked it. So I'll select asset and I'll call it player death. Press OK. And I will go to my player start tab. I'll add a new sound here, self dot death sound equals sound underscore nil. And the name of the file that is player death dot mp3. And in the loop tab, whenever my player collides with an enemy before I change to another room, I will sound play. And the name of the sound that is the death sound. And that should work. Nice. It works very well. Very, very good. We could even add the new sound for when the uh, when we are on the game over room and we press the space bar to restart the game. I'll leave that with you. You can do it by yourself now that we've done it m many, many different times, right? And that's it. We've finished our game. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. This was our last class. Our game now is finished. We have many different stuff happening here already, right? And with all this knowledge you've got here from this tutorial, you can definitely start building uh, a bigger game right now. Or you can even watch other tutorials that will be coming up soon. You can also leave a comment on this video if you have any questions. Or you can just post your, your game's link so we can access and play your game. I would be uh, very happy to see some of your projects. Uh, if you don't know how to get the link for your game, I can show you right now. So if you go to my apps, wait. I have to save first, I don't want to lose my progress. So if you go to my apps, here you find your game. And as I said before, in the first class, you can edit all this information. So you can click here on this arrow, go to edit. And then here you can add an, a thumbnail for your app. So that's an image to be your, your thumbnail. You can choose the, the app name, you can change, you can add a new app description. Right, and here on this same arrow, you have the play link. So if I click on this play, it will bring me to this screen where I can play my game on full screen almost, right? And you can just grab this link here on your browser and send to your friends that they will be able to play your game from anywhere. And that's it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Leave a comment, uh, leave your like behind, and I'll see you in other tutorials. Bye guys, see you.